Good morning and welcome to Take Your Life Back Today Show with Ralph Friedrichs. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Today I want to talk about a book that I recently uh, kind of glanced through. Didn't read the whole book, but for what I glanced through, I kind of made some notes and made highlights of uh, what this book was really about. And the book was called Dead Drunk, and it was written by Paul Garrigan. Now, he has a lot of good stuff, good information about addiction and recovery. If you go to paulgarrigan.com, that's P-A-U-L-G-A-R-R-I-G-A-N.com, you will also find the book available on Amazon called Dead Drunk. And the topic for this particular, and I took this directly out of his book, is called Seven Reasons It Took Me Almost Two Decades, 20 Years, to Escape Alcoholism. Before we jump into the highlights of that, I want to give a shout out to Paul, uh, excuse me, to Larry Geese from the Geese Academy at 516-485-2741. That's 516-485-2741. You can find him on the web at www.odysseyconsultant.org. That's odysseyconsultant.org. That's Geese Academy. His name is Larry Geese. He is an addiction recovery coach for over 30 years, a life coach for over 30 years. He's a good friend of mine. Reach out to him. Let him help you with your addiction. Let him help you with your loved one's addiction. Let him set up a plan for recovery for yourself or your loved one. Let him help you with an intervention. He is there to help you take your life back. But you have to reach out to Larry Geese at the Geese Academy at 516-485-2741. Go to the website. It's odysseyconsultant.org. That's www dot o d y s s e y c o n s u l t a n t dot org. That's Larry Geese from the Geese Academy five one six four eight five two seven four one. And tell Larry you heard about him on the Take Your Life Back Today show. Give a shout out to globaleyeglassesguide.com where they are focused on saving you money, folks. Hundreds have gotten in touch with me for me to assist them ordering glasses from Global Eyeglasses. The prices are astronomically low, as low as $6, going up to about $69 for the frame. What this frame includes, now listen up, is a case, a cloth, plastic, standard, single vision, non-coated lenses. That's all included in that price. You might ask, like so many have done, I need, uh, you, what about progressives, what about transitions, photochromatics, polarized, anti-flecting coating, UV, then they're high index lenses. Folks, they are all available. Whatever you can get in your brick and mortar optical local store, you can get at globaleyeglasses.com. The difference is, is the price. They don't have the overhead, they don't have the employees, the rent, like uh, the brick and mortar place at your local optical shop. So, you can reach out to that and here is the highlighted benefit. The benefit is, is that you have me, a man, with over 30 years in the optometry business to help you order from globaleyeglasses.com. Reach out to me at uh, 631-599-0218. That's my text. You can call me at 844-405-HELP. And I will help take your life back as well as getting you the eyeglasses you need. Please reach out to Global Eyeglasses at www.globaleyeglasses.com and let them show you how they are focused on saving you money. Folks, go to my websites www.takeyourlifebacktodayshow.com That's this website for this show. You can also go to www.clearviews.info That is a website that I designed on 100% information on addiction and recovery. On page 7 you will find uh, for every state a addiction recovery center, maybe one or two. Not for every location in every state, but there is a location for every state on my website. Page 7 you can also go, um, if you want to hire me to be your addiction recovery coach, life coach, at www.clearreform.com. Uh, you notice that both my websites, out of the three, start with the word CLEAR. CLEAR stands for Community Lessons and Power Addiction Recovery. It is you and I, our community, our lessons. Paul Garrigan's lesson I'm going to read about that empower our addiction recovery. Folks, reach out to me at 844-405-HELP. This is directly taken from Paul Garrigan's book, Seven Reasons It Took Me Almost Two Decades, that's 20 Years, to Escape Alcoholism. And I'm going to read directly from 
captions of this book. I ended up trapped in alcohol addiction for almost two decades, a huge chunk of my life that I, have, I can never ever get back. It didn't ha have to be that way. Here are the seven reasons why it took me almost 20 years, two decades, to break away from alcohol. Here's his reason number one, Bull Garrigan at BullGarrigan.com. I gave myself the option to relapse. I use the claim that relapse is a normal part of recovery as a get out of jail free card. And this is, has been my argument about AA. They make it sound like once you relapse it's okay. Just, you know, get up and redo it. And I'm not saying people don't have relapses. I have had relapses uh, many years ago. The thing is, is that you don't use that as a crutch. So Paul Garrigan's reason number one is, is that he was using it as a get out of free jail card. I adopted the catchphrase, of course I'm drinking again. I'm an alcoholic. I didn't realize I could just decide to give up drinking forever without allowing myself to the relapse option. You have to eliminate the relapse option. Instead, I took on the role of powerless victim and I refused to take responsibility for my returns to alcohol. It wasn't until I, committed to, I was committed to breaking away from drinking forever that I became able to let go of the relapse option. His thinking here, and I agree with it, is, is that you cannot use the relapse option as an option uh, to, to break away from alcohol because it's not an option. It is an error that cannot be repeated. Reason number two that he gives directly out of his book called Dead Drunk by Paul Garrigan. I never gave up being an alcoholic. I would manage to stop drinking for long periods of time once I lasted two years with the help of AA. But I never gave up being an alcoholic. I know some people are able to build a good life by taking on a persona of recovering alcoholic. But this didn't work for me because it meant alcohol continued to be in the center stage in my life. My drinking problems ended when I quit booze for the last time in 2006. I not only gave up alcohol, I gave up being an alcoholic. See, see the comparison here is that not only did he stop drinking, but he also mentally said, I am not an alcoholic anymore. Those are the two things. You're an alcoholic that drinks alcohol. You cannot just drink, stop drinking alcohol and not and still say you're an alcoholic because an alcoholic will still feed their alcoholism with alcohol. You need to break away from both of those two things. Number three on this list is I believed I was too young to quit drinking. I hit my first treatment center at the age of 19, but I didn't stop drinking for a good until I reached the mid-30s. My exploits with alcohol led to a great deal of suffering in my life. I was too young to quit. It was complete bullshit, of course, excuse my language. Alcohol sucked all the goodness out of my life and I was never too young to choose happiness. So he finally, it took, his first treatment center he went into was at the age of 19 and it took him until his mid-30s. And it takes, everybody has a different age when they stop drinking. With me, it was my fifth, uh, my uh, beginning 50s, early 50s. Some people might do it in their 20s, 30s. Some people maybe never, which I hope to God, I don't speak to anyone in my audience right now, that will never ever quit. Excuse me one second. Because it is so important that we stop before it's too late. You don't want to get to the point of ending up uh, well, like a, a good friend of my friend, Paul Kaplan, where he ended up with a stroke and is in a nursing home. Don't let it get to that point. Number four, I didn't have a good enough reason to quit drinking. Everybody has certain reasons. It could be health, it could be relationship, it could be forced by the courts. After I hit my first treatment center, I knew that I should have given up on alcohol. The other strong motivation for my regular attempts to quit was fear. I didn't want to endure the horrible death of an alcoholic. The problem is, is that should uh, that should and fear are the two dumbest reasons in the world for giving up anything. Neither is going to provide strong and lasting motivation. In the end, my motivation for giving up drinking was the same for why I turned to alcohol in the first place. I wanted to find inner peace and happiness. So, in other words, what he's saying is don't 
be forced to give up. You need to give up because you want to find the peace within and the happiness. Number five on his list. I focus on what I was giving up and not what I was gaining. Look at the pros and cons of giving up alcohol. Giving up something is hard, but taking action in order to gain something you really want is much easier. I stopped thinking, dr uh, drinking because I wanted to find happiness and it has no longer felt like I was giving anything else up. Number six on his list. I blend all my problems on alcohol, the, the blame game. That's what I, I choose to call that. My alcohol problems ended the day I gave up drinking for good. Since then I have had problems just like anyone else. For many years I would blame everything on alcoholism. I even do this during my sober periods. I didn't realize that I was just a human and I had an alcohol problem and then not some type of special entity entity called alcohol or alcoholic. So he finally realized that he had a problem and he made the move on it. Number seven, I focus on the excuse for being an alcoholic instead of taking action. The problem with focusing on the excuses is that it just sucks away all the motivation out of your body. There is always going to be an excuse not to do something, yet successful people still manage to get things done all the time. Thinking about the reasons I couldn't stop drinking only kept me trapped in failure. But when I diverted my energy to take an action and away from my making excuses, the most amazing things started happening. What he says in his book called A Dead Drunk is how to avoid my mistakes and avoiding wasting years, sometimes decades like in Paul Garrigan, uh, years of alcoholism. If you're getting what you need from your 12-step program, you might want to stop reading at this point. Some of these suggestions are almost the opposite of what is recommended by AA. Here are my suggestions for how you can avoid the mistakes I and many thousands of people have made. If you're serious about breaking away from alcohol, don't give yourself a relapse option. Eliminate that option. Give up on being an alcoholic. You need to finally say, I am not an alcoholic. I will not be labeled as an alcoholic. I am breaking away from alcoholism. The only right time to give up alcohol is today, now. Just do it. Have a clear, positive reason for why you want to give up alcohol. Don't think uh, of it as alcohol giving up on, excuse me, don't think of it as giving up alcohol. See it as gaining a much better life. Stop blaming all your problems on alcohol. Stop making excuses for why you are still drinking. Instead, focus on taking action to change this. These are his suggestions. I'm going to do a recap. Now this is Paul Garrigan. A book he wrote was called Dead Drunk. On the beginning of this video you saw my cover picture for this episode and you'll see the book. You can find him at paulgarrigan.com. That's P-A-U-L-G-A-R-R-I-G-A-N.com. The name of the book again is called Dead Drunk. And seven reasons it took me almost 20 years, two decades, to escape alcoholism. I ended up trapped in alcohol addiction for almost 20 years. A huge chunk of my life that I can never ever get back. It didn't have to be that way. Here are the seven reasons for why it took me almost 20 years to break away from alcohol. Reason number one that he says is... I gave myself the relapse option. What he recommends in this book is don't give you that option. It's either you're going to quit or you're not. Don't use the relapse option as a cushion saying, okay, well, I relapse. I'll start again. Because what you're doing is you're giving, it's almost like a curve at a, a, a testing, a, a, a scoring a test where you give yourself that curve test a score. It's either you fail or you succeed. There is no mediocre in there. So don't give yourself the relapse option. I used to claim the relapse is a normal part of recovery as to get out of jail free card. I adopted the catchphrase, of course I'm drinking again. I'm an alcoholic, so it's okay. I didn't realize that I could just decide to give up drinking forever without allowing myself to relapse option. Instead, I took on the role of the powerless victim 
and I refuse to take responsibility for my returns to alcohol. It wasn't until I was committed to breaking away from drinking forever that I became able to let go of the relapse option. Number two, I never gave up being an alcoholic. You either say, oh, you're, you're still an alcoholic even though know, you're not drinking, or you finally say, I'm not an alcoholic anymore, I don't need the alcohol. I would manage to stop drinking for long periods of time, one time for almost two years with the help of AA. But I never gave up being an alcoholic. I know some people are able to build a good life by taking on the persona of recovering alcoholic. But this didn't work for me because it meant alcohol continued to be the center stage of my life. My drinking problems ended when I quit the booze for the last time in 2006. I not only gave up alcohol, I also gave up being an alcoholic. Number three on this list, I believed I was too young to quit drinking. I hit my first treatment center at the age of 19, but didn't stop drinking for good until I reached the mid-30s. My exploits with alcohol led to a great deal of suffering in my life, but there would always be this idea in the back of my mind that I was too young to quit. It was complete BS, of course. Alcohol sucked all the goodness out of my life, and I was never too young to choose happiness. Number four on this list is I didn't have good enough reason to quit drinking. What is a good enough reason? Is it because you're losing your wife or your husband? Is it because the doctor says you're going to die? Is it because you're ready to lose your job? Is it because people are just putting a lot of pressure on you? After I hurt, hit my first treatment center, I knew that I should give up alcohol. The other strong motivation for my regular attempts to quit was fear. I didn't want to endure the horrible death of an alcoholic. The problem is that sh sh uh, that should and fear are the two shittiest reasons in the world to give up on anything. Neither is going to provide strong and lasting motivation. In the end, my motivation for giving up drinking was the same for why I turned to alcohol in the first place. I wanted to find inner peace and happiness. And as you folks know, if you're a con uh, a, whether you drink sociably <clears throat> or um, if you are like a lot of us that were alcoholics, you will not never ever find inner peace and happiness by consuming alcohol. I felt number five. I focus on when, uh, what I was giving up and not what I was gaining in life. Giving up something is hard, but taking action in order to gain something you really want is much easier. I stopped drinking because I wanted to find happiness, so it no longer felt like I was giving up anything. Number six on this list was I blamed all my problems on alcohol. My alcohol problems ended the day I gave up drinking for good. Since then I have had life problems just like anyone else, like you and me. For years I would blame everything on alcoholism. I'd even do this during my sober periods. I didn't realize that I was just a human that had an alcoholic problem, an alcohol problem and not some type of special entity called alcoholic. Number seven on this list, I focus on excuses for being an alcoholic instead of taking actions. This problem with focusing on excuses is what just sucks away the life and the motivation. There's always going to be an excuse not to do something, yet successful people still manage to get things done when they find, excuse, uh, when they find reasons to do something. Thinking about the reasons I couldn't stop drinking only kept me trapped in failure. But when I diverted my energy and taken action and away from making excuses and looking for reasons why to do something, the most amazing things began to happen. Paul Garrigan says in his book, Dead Drunk, how to avoid making mistakes and avoid wasting years on alcoholism. <laughs> if you're getting what you need from your 12-step program, you might want to stop reading or listening to my episode. I hope not at this point. Some of these suggestions are almost the opposite of what is recommended by AA. Here are my suggestion, that's Paul Garrigan's from Dead Drunk Suggestions, for how to avoid mistakes. If you're serious about breaking away from alcohol, don't give yourself the relapse option. Forget about relapse. Relapse is failure. If you relapse is what he's saying, it is a failure. Because if you allow yourself the relapse option, you're utilizing it as a crutch. I do say that relapse can happen, and I do want to motivate you that if you do have a relapse to get up and start again, but don't use that as an option from the get-go. 
relapse should be the last and only thing to happen, not expect it to happen. Give up on alcohol, uh, or give up being an alcoholic is what he's saying. When you stop drinking, get rid of the thought that you're an alcoholic because what people are doing is they're going to go through even years after stopping the drinking by saying that you're an alcoholic, you're putting the word in the middle, in the center of your life. Now, me doing this show constantly reminds me that I'm an alcoholic. However, I started spinning it and saying the reason I'm doing my show is not just because I know I, w I had a drinking problem, it's because I know I want to help people. The only right time to give up alcohol is now, today, right now. Don't use the excuse that I'll do it tomorrow. Because I have said this many times before, tomorrow is not guaranteed in your life or in mine. There are thousands of people within our world right now that are closing their eyes for the last time. That are breathing their last breath. For an example, last week in Mastic Beach, four children come home from school get locked out of their house. Didn't know what's going on. So they ran to the local ice cream store at, in Mastic Beach on Neighborhood Road, got the adult uh, worker there to follow them because their house was right across the street. The man peered or looked through the window and sees two bodies. Two bodies, a husband and a wife. Two children, a two-year-old and a two-month-old within the house. They're okay. But as far as the husband, shot in the head. The wife, shot in the head. The husband took the wife's life and then took his own. This is what I mean. Now, we don't know what the reasons are yet. We don't know if drugs or alcohol played a role in this. But one thing is certain. What if these two folks had the thought of saying we'll change tomorrow, whether it's related to alcoholism or any other reason, you cannot procrastinate on what needs to change today because a tomorrow, like for them, or you or me, are not guaranteed. Have a clear positive reason for why you want to give up alcohol. Is it because you want to save your life because your doctor says your kidneys, your livers are going to fail you? Is it because your husband and your wife or your wife threatened to leave? Is it because you are going to lose your job, whatever the reason? Put them all in one basket and say, isn't it time to quit now? And stop blaming all your problems on alcohol because you are making the choice to take that alcohol. Your problems are there. It's how you deal with those problems. If you want to deal with them through alcohol, that's a temporary band-aid. It's a temporary fix. You need to deal with them sober and once and for all. Stop making excuses for why you are still drinking. Instead, focus on taking action to change this. How about focusing and saying, why not stop drinking? What are the benefits that you will find in life when you stop drinking? Folks, I want to say this over and over and over, and I sound like a broken record, but a sober today, I promise you, will start your day tomorrow much better. And if you use that analogy 24 hours a time, just keep saying, today, today, Monday, I'm going to stay sober, so I'm guaranteed to have a better Tuesday, God willing. And then on Tuesday, say, today, Tuesday, I'm going to stay sober, so Wednesday is a better day. And you see the pattern that I'm setting up. Go by the analogy every 24 hours, one day at a time, making a promise to yourself, to your wife, to your children, and to your Lord Jesus Christ that today you will stay sober for the next 24 hours. A sober today, promise you, will make a better tomorrow. And just think, folks, when I say change in life, I'm not asking you to change overnight because all changes, big or small, take tiny steps. But utilize those steps to make the changes, the positive changes in your life. And if you start thinking positive in your life, you will notice positive things will happen. You will see the positive results in your life. Positive things like spirituality, financial, health, 
relationship, all these things will start changing. Uh, please teach your children and your grandchildren to say no to drugs and alcohol. And please get this book. It's called Dead Drunk. And it's written by Paul Garrigan. That's G A R R I G A N. And you can find the book on Amazon uh, or his website, paulgarrigan.com. That's P A U L G A R R I G A N.com. Get the book, read the book. He's got so much good stuff in that book. Today's topic from his book was called Seven Reasons It Took Me Almost 20 Years to Escape Alcoholism. I hope to God, folks, each and every one of you in my audience has a great day. But please, I hope to God and I pray to God that each and every one of you has a sober day. And may God bless you.